Tanisha and welcome back to the painting video and for today's video I'm super excited because we're gonna be doing another Studio Ghibli tutorial and this time we'll be painting mountains in Studio Ghibli style so yeah I hope that you guys are excited and let's get started As I showed in the beginning, I have done a bunch of Studio Ghibli paintings where I've done mountains and I know that you guys are always curious on how I paint them. So in this video, I will be showing you how you can paint snowy mountains or normal hills or even the tall rocky ones. So yeah, go ahead and grab a snack or grab your painting supplies and come join me in this fun painting process. And for art supplies, you can use paper that's above 190 GSM and for my paintbrush, I'm not too picky with it as long as you have a square paintbrush or like a large flat random one and then two small brushes that's pointy so you can add some details later I'm happy with that so with that let's get into the painting part and as you saw I also pulled out a palette knife so I can mix the colors which I also don't end up using as much because I use my paintbrush for it but for the colors I'm using the Himi gouache set I wanted to try the big one again and yeah I wanted to start with a scene from House Moving Castle because it was the simplest one out of what I was going to teach you and this one just requires a few colors which is green and some yellow and then white to add some snowy tip and one thing that I like to do before starting a painting is to look at the color palette. So in this picture, we had greens, yellows, white, of course, for highlights and the snowy tip. And also saw some brown and blue. And I did add a little bit of black, but not too much of it so it doesn't overpower it. And to get started, I wanted to create the green that would match the base color that I saw in the mountain. And don't worry too much about it because later on we'll add more colors. But I used the green to kind of shape out the shape. <laughs> and then I started adding shapes shadows. If you saw my last video, I was talking about think about where the light is coming from and in this picture the light is coming from the right so that means the shadow will be showing up on the left side and this is why I'm taking into consideration as I'm painting is I'm putting the lines in a way that it's casting shadows on the left and leaving the right side the same color right now so that way later I'll add the highlights on it and it's kind of difficult to explain how I paint those mountains it's gonna take you a lot of trial and error to get how to make it look kind of realistic but we're not going for fully realistic looks but to kind of make it look like a mountain and just kind of follow what I'm doing with my paintbrush and you can do it one two three times take your time and enjoy the process And after adding the shadows, I decided to add the snow tip, which basically only requires the white color. And I decided to dab it the same way I did for the shadows, but instead of going long was, I'm just touching on the tips and also referencing from the picture. And again, it doesn't have to look exactly the same there. You just have to dab it and let your paintbrush move kind of freely. And again, it'll take a lot of try and error, but with time, you'll become more confident as you keep practicing. And to finish it up, I wanted to use a little bit of the yellow to add some highlight on the other side, which is the right side, to show that sun is hitting on the part that there's no shadows. So yeah, just use the yellow, mix a little bit with the green and start dabbing it again like you did for the shadows, but on the other side. that you completed your first simple mountain well I hope that it was simple but yeah I hope that you guys were able to follow along and if not feel free to go back and rewatch the painting process and see how I'm doing it and yeah let's move on to the next mountain And 
for the next mountain, I didn't actually choose a reference from Studio Ghibli, but this time from an actual picture, so I could show you guys how you can make it become Studio Ghibli style. And this picture that I showed you, I found it on Pinterest. I really liked how the mountain looked and it was a different color. So instead of using green, now we're gonna do a mountain with a brown base layer and start adding the shadows and the highlights the same way we did it before. And again here, I'm starting just to paint straight away without a sketch, but you guys can go ahead and do a light sketch so you know where to place the colors, but I wanted to be quick with it. I'm pretty used to it. So yeah, I just roughly sketch out the outline and then started filling it in with the brown color. And similarly to the other mountains that we did, I then went into adding the shadows. And again, in this picture, the light was coming from the right side again. So same thing, I use a darker brown this time to add the shadows long wise, but then use my paintbrush to just kind of dab it. I am not doing straight lines. I'm just kind of loosely placing it on the left side of every peak that I have and you just have to imagine this mountain have a bunch of crevices and holes so where that would appear is when you'll place your darker colors so I'm first starting out by placing the bigger shadows which is between those peaks and then I'll go back and add final lines in between just kind of loosely like I'm doing it on camera and yeah step back see if I need some more compared to the painting and then go back there and here to make it look more like Sue Ghibli style is you don't have to make it look exactly like the pictures try and define the main colors and then put it on paper so I use brown as the base layer dark and brown on the shadows and we're gonna go a little bit more intricate after that, which is adding purple. And this might be weird, but yes, if you look closely into the picture, you will see a little bit of purple in the shadows. So I'm using the purple and starting to add it in the shadows and not completely filling it out, just dabbing in, taking my time with it. And yeah, just keep going on until it matches the picture. After adding the first layer of the shadows, I felt like it needed like a darker color. So I decided to dip my paintbrush in black and later on a little bit of brown to kind of make it not pop out too much. So it's still blending with the colors. And I started adding more of a darker color with the shadows. And just gonna follow along what I'm doing. It's basically only on the base because the base part of the mountain is the one that's not seeing the sun on the left side. So I'm trying to make it darker to show that, hey, it's in the bottom and it's not getting some sunlight. So I started by adding more of the dark colors in the base and then making it thinner as I go upwards to show that is where I'm getting more of the light coming in. After that, I decided to start adding some yellows to show the highlights again because you can see more of the sun on the right side. And I didn't just add the yellow right away. I decided to mix it with the brown first a little bit so it kind of matches the color on the mountain and started again dabbing it without completely covering the areas just to show the rocky feeling. So it's not perfect and polished. It's just kind of dabbed at some point and then leave some point the base color. So yeah, just put it on the right side of each peak and kind of bring it down a little bit. But as you go down, it's the opposite. You make it smaller when you go down because that's when less and less sun will appear. I was able to start adding the snow and I first started by adding the white. I kind of mixed it a little bit with the brown just so it blends in for the part where the snow is not appearing as much. And also have the peak and sides of the mountain pop more for the colors. 
and then I just fell in for the picture and started adding the white when I would see it. And throughout this painting, I'm pretty sure that you noticed that using the pointy brush definitely helped in adding details and dabbing the colors where you need it to be. And here I'm showing a close-up shot on how I'm adding the snow. And again, take your time. I slowed it down so you guys can see at the pace that I'm working and making sure I'm looking at the picture and placing streak by streak the snow and then going back to refill my paintbrush with some more white so it's not blending with the previous colors and make the white pop. Also, sometimes even I don't know when to stop because the painting could have been done after I added the snow but I don't know why I got the urge to add some more of the darker shades to make it pop out more you can totally stop after the snow part but if you want to keep going like me be very careful because you might end up messing out here but just make sure you add a little bit of detail on the shadows if you want to and then we'll call it a day Alright, and for the final mountain study, I'm gonna show you how I painted this mountain earlier in my sketchbook because I know a lot of you guys liked how I did it. So I wanted to have the background in it and then show you how I add the mountain on top of it. To first get started, I started by adding a blue color for the sky and then once it dried a little bit, I started adding the clouds and I'm not putting too much details in the clouds because the focus here is how to paint the mountain. If you're interested to know how I paint Suju clouds I have a video up in my channel where you can watch it later But yeah, after adding the clouds, I started by sketching out the mountain. And again, you could use a pencil to lightly sketch it out, but I was confident enough to just kind of roughly sketch it out with my paintbrush. And I apologize if my face do pop it in between. I didn't know that I was so close to it. Sometimes when I paint, I do tend to put my face in my painting so much and that's not good for the back. So I'm trying to fix my back exposure while I paint, but Anyway, after adding the rough sketch, which was basically a color mixed with black and blue and a little bit of purple, because purple is a shade that you usually find in darker shade colors, so I definitely mix it with that. So after adding the first lining, I went back and added the second layer of the mountains. And if you see in the picture, you'll understand what I'm trying to do. So yeah, the top part will be the darkest part and then the snow part will come in later because that's what collected in the bottom. And yeah, that's what I'm gonna do for the first layer, nothing too hard. So just make sure you spend your time to sketch out the shape and we'll move on to the next part. Finally, we are able to add the snow and using the same technique that we use in the other mountain, we're gonna start slowly dabbing the white color. And this time, since the mountain is shooting straight up, you can actually make lines, but think about how you draw tree branches. That's kind of what we wanna do on the mountain. But here, instead of going up and outwards like a tree, we're doing it upside down. So it's starting at a tip and opening up downwards where you can add more and more white to show where the snow is collecting. Ooh, I think that was a good explanation. This is the best way I could explain this the easiest way. So let me know if I make sense because sometimes I start talking and talking and I think it makes sense but it might not. And when I paint, I just get in the zone. So yeah, I'm trying hard to kind of like verbalize what I actually do on a creative process. But yeah, just kind of take your time with it again and you can start building up layers. Gouache can definitely handle it. So start it out by thin layers, thin lines again on the top and then press your brush more as you get in the bottom to show thicker layers. And always go back and wash your brush and add the color back so it's not blending it with the color in the background. And 
one thing you might have noticed is in between the two ranges of mountain I did not paint the middle part because I knew that it was gonna be white and again it goes back to looking at your picture first before painting and deciding where you're gonna place the colors so I already knew that white snow is gonna be there and the reason I'm not putting paint the darker paint in it is so first I know where the shape lies but also I'm thinking about the type of painting that I'm using here I'm using gouache and gouache tends to be reactivated when you paint it on top of another colors basically with water which is in your paintbrush so by doing this I'm decreasing the amount of white that I have to use because then if there was a darker background I would have to use more layers of white and make it thicker so I could make it pop more so leaving the part white helped me a lot into making the snow look whiter and make it pop more in the painting As you know me when I paint there is sometimes never enough details <laughs> the painting has dried a little bit and yes please keep it in mind when I'm editing I'm also cutting down in between so it might look like I'm painting quickly but I really I'm having drying time in between layers so I could add more layers in the end so for this one I waited for it to dry a little bit before I started adding more white on it so that way the white can pop a little bit more on the darkest spot and yeah I just use my tiny point brush and just kind of dab it to show some highlights on the snow and yes you have snow and then you can add more highlights on the snow on top of that because the white that I added even if I was being careful earlier it did blend in with the background but I didn't mind it at that time because I needed to show some shadow in the snow as well so then I went back and added some more white on top of it and I didn't have to use much of the white because I was able to save a white spot in the background <laughs> I hope that you guys enjoy watching me paint or painting along with me. I know those mountains are smaller than usual, but I wanted to show you three different types of mountains so you can collect as much knowledge as you could from my painting experience. And I was also able to fit this in my three hour period that I got to paint for this weekend. But yeah, I hope that it was still helpful. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below. And if you had any difficulties, I will try to help you in the comments down below or have a follow up video after that. And with that, I will see you in the next one. Allez, bye! There is a life I lead in this city Hurrying to cut my teeth I can take what I need to get by It doesn't make it easy The other piece of my heart moves slow Somewhere in the great unknown When I return from the afterglow Will you carry me like I am whole?